Hi everyone, we're here, we are casting the WCA European Open Qualifier number two. We cast number one last week at the same time and the same exact thing happened. Binary Beasts broke or wouldn't update or whatever and it took an extra couple of minutes for the bracket to actually be live, but it's finally live. Um, we do have a lot more of, I guess, the guys who were going to Montreal now uh, signed up, like Harstam, I see right at the top, for instance. Nice. Yeah, nice. A couple of the same people who signed up last time and didn't quite make it, such as Night End, who did lose to Demaga in the finals. Oh, the Muslim's playing. Uh, there you go, the Muslim as well. So there's uh, a couple of good names. Usually European brackets are pretty damn big. So the top four of today, so those who win the quarterfinals and get into the semifinals, will actually be the ones to uh, qualify for the next step qualifier so this is a qualifier into Ooh. another qualifier that is invites i see a really nice round two matchup right away okay well what about round one i don't know about round one but solo plays against panara in round one and when it plays lily canine in round two and solo is not such oh. a good player that he outclasses lily canine in fact they'd probably be a good match for each other if you will i do want to point out another heavy Ooh. hitter on the bracket i I made a joke to Zambria, but I do want to see Braddock play a bunch today if we get the opportunity. Uh, he's in the top. He'll be facing Harstam for not quite the qualifying qualifying spot. Not quite. Well, potentially. We don't really know how this will shake down. Well, no, they literally meet before a qualifying match. I mean... You don't know. Maybe Harstam loses to free slot seven, okay? <laughs> so he already got advanced over it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Okay, well, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to cast whatever. I just uh, it'll be nice to see some of these guys get through for sure and cast them later in the main events. Yeah. So, um, like I was saying, and you should message whoever you want us to cast. Um, so this goes into the qualifier where they invited. They actually tried to get the top sixteen, um, eight of the top sixteen European ladder, um, spots. Uh, invited. Unfortunately, two people could not accept the invite. I think one of them was Snoot and someone, someone else. But you have a lot of people in Europe already invited to the next step step of the qualifier, and that's the one that gets the money for winning. I do believe. And then money, that, please. yeah, that qualifies. There's like qualifier and a qualifier and a qualifier, right? That one goes to the big main event. So basically, there's a. European qualifier into second stage European qualifier. And then that is the European qualifier for the big main event that happens later this year. So it's not so different actually from the way like IEM would do it. You know, first it'd be the huge bracket and then they would get condensed down in the top 16. And then like the top two or four from there would go to the actual main events. It's just that you have uh, payouts earlier in the qualifiers. Thanks to War Buffy for the new uh, resub. Three month resub. Thank you. Yeah, I guess we'll be getting into that soon. So, I mean, the plan right now is to try and cast everything. Don't feel so great. And I had questionable lunch <laughs> that I hope doesn't make me feel Oh, yeah. Later. What did you get? Or what did you make? Well, I really wanted to get sushi, right? So I went and I saw that they actually had some ready at like 10, 15 or something like that. I guess for people that go early and get lunch and drive back to work or something, probably. But they like only just started making it and it was pretty low quality and it wasn't even what I, exactly what I wanted, so. I am lucky in that the sushi I like to eat is the really simple retarded, you can't fuck it up stuff. Like I only eat California, California rolls, rolls or like chicken teriyaki. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of like- this was a California roll that had like spicy mayo or whatever on it, except the spicy mayo wasn't what it was a spicy, it just tasted like mayo. So I ended up scraping it off. Um, Yo, like uh, three months, four months ago, I had a, a Crazy Boy roll. And I don't know if this is just like a restaurant exclusive thing because I haven't seen it in others, but it was a California roll basically that was deep fried like tempura. Uh huh. So good. Yeah. There's a lot of good sushi rolls, but they were so limited. I wanted sashimi, <laughs> actually, so that's why. Let's see what it's pointed, but yeah, anyway. Um, the thing is that, well, this isn't the biggest bracket. Oh, thank you to Corbmanj for the four-month resub. 
Uh, base UTV, even better than my rubber ducky. You make work time so much fun. Ooh, I was about to misread that. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, yeah, well, it's not a very, like, long bracket, and top four do qualify. Last time they made us cast every single qualifier, which drastically increases uh, the yeah, amount of time uh, we cast. <laughs> Again, I am the invisible pain just sitting here, and that's whatever. Zombie Rub has a bit more of the emphasis here because, well, I could just bitch out. She has to run the stream type thing. But she said she's not feeling so hot. We told the organizers, too, we'll cast as much as we can, but we may end up leaving this a bit early, all things considered. Uh, hopefully, we can make it through the whole thing because it's always like that bit of a challenge, but we'll see how it goes. If the games are quick, it'll be easy. If they're really long and draining, then it might not be. But either way, we'll see how this goes. I uh, gotta give some shout, a uh, quick shout by the way to Corbin J in chat. Uh, we were talking about yesterday. I didn't really get a chance to thank him for it, but he had mentioned when we brought up the the <laughs> Ting thing that that's when he had, uh, or I guess not we. I was in co-op stuff, but he mentioned that was when he first watched Base Trade TV, the two v two tournament. So that's kind of cool. Mm, cool. Do we have a match? I don't know. I can't type to players and, and ask them. I just. Oh, I wish you had told me that when I said then you should poke them. <laughs> Oh, well, I thought you were being sarcastic on account of the fact that I can't. Dude, like, you're so confusing. You play Overwatch. I don't know what you can or cannot do. Just assume I can't do anything. I'm like a big baby. Like co-op when I said with you and you got like a big baby about it? <laughs> Jesus. That ended, up, that ended up being funnier more than anything else. <laughs> God. Well. All right. Uh, who was it? That that tweet, by the way, I don't even think it was like the the message of what you wrote. Just like more of like the perfect use of Robbie's face. <laughs> it's made that so good. All right. Well then. Um, okay, he's not here. Um, Are these all best of threes, by the way? Like an entire yeah. range. Yeah. Okay, because I saw that they weren't doing like like a challenge when it's in advance over a free one. It's like ninety nine zero or whatever. These are just two zeros, so I wasn't sure. Mm, yeah, they don't do that. They mess up on that all the time. Well, the one that we were looking at that so you mentioned, I guess, has already started. Um, Braddock is looking for his opponent. It doesn't look like he's here either, though. Yeah, there's a couple people who look like it might just be walkovers for them. I mean, to be honest, though, that's not so uncommon with these. With European events, you get so many players signed up because there are just simply more, and so many more people also don't show up as a consequence. Yeah. Uh, so Man, far. Man, the top, the top bracket. So I'm just while well, you're looking, like Hearthstone so. versus potentially Braddock, and then the qualifying match versus Guru most likely is going to be a really that top quarter of the brackets one to keep an eye on for certain. Right. Whatever, I'll just. <clears throat> Open call to begin with. Oh, Gamescom starts today? No. I don't know how that works. I feel like I wish I did. It doesn't seem StarCraft focused, so I don't pay attention to it. Yeah, there's like the huge Overwatch tournament that's happening. And then there is a StarCraft tournament. Oh, geez. I just realized I'm wondering how that's going to. So, there's been some talk this year and some murmurs about like, will StarCraft get the main stage of BlizzCon again? And of course, none of us will know until it's like the day of. But I'm curious if where they put that Overwatch stage, or if like let's say God yeah. forbid, Starcraft gets downgraded, who do we end up sharing the hall with? Right? Like last year it was WoW slash Heroes back to back, and that created a lot of problems. Overwatch has uh, gained a lot of hype, but I'm wondering if it's enough to dethrone Starcraft from Mike Morham's favorite seat yet. I really. Don't know. I want to say that eventually Overwatch will just overtake it, just with how popular it is and how much money it makes and whatnot. Like, just straight up, I think it'd be foolish for them not to. But maybe. Um, but you could you could make the argument money wise at least about Heroes probably makes a lot more money than StarCraft. WoW could be argued has the potential to get more <laughs> views than StarCraft. It's it's. I don't know what uh, metrics they so use. I've always just assumed it's been Mike Morham like. King of the Castle saying, no, place my favorite game here. I don't care what anyone... Well, he's probably. not British. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's not British. Um, yeah, I agree. Well, I what think if he it... was? What if he just put on a show for every time he met people? Anyways. Like, like this is like some Bruce Wayne Batman stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, Anyways. Uh, I, always, I just figured it was a combination of things. Like, um, 
Heroes isn't exactly like super well loved, so even though it has a consistent tournament st structure that led to like this grand finals, it was still off to the side. Hearthstone, kind of the same deal, makes a lot of fucking money and actually has like a good viewer count, but StarCraft was just like it had the it had the tournament scene that led up to BlizzCon finals, which is great. And my Warren really liked it, <laughs> so we got the main stage. And it, it was for the longest time the premier esport. Like Hearthstone esports was not start of esports, and some people would argue, <laughs> I guess, against their valid uh, if they're valid esports or not. But Overwatch is eventually going to get a WCS-like tournament. I just can't see them not doing that. But it's not happening this year, so that'd be the only reason that I would say that it doesn't get the main stage, because. I mean, unless they start the qualifiers right now for BlizzCon, there's no tournament leading up to it. And I doubt they'd want to do just like a 16-man, or 16-man, 16-team invite grand finals and take the main stage for it. That's just my yeah. guess, though. I don't know. It'll be cool to see, though, whenever that finally does come to fruition, though, for certain. Yeah. I'm, I'm still, like, I love meeting my friends at BlizzCon that don't really watch StarCraft, and they pull them into that uh, that room and the stage and everything, like, really lights it up and makes it crazy. And for, like, that one day, they're into StarCraft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder, like, too, like, I mean, there's no, huh. I'm just wondering about, like, like monetarily, right? Like, there's no, like, what, whatever happens on the main stage doesn't really matter, right? Like, just because StarCraft is on the main stage doesn't mean it's going to get, like, 50 billion more dollars than if it was on a smaller stage, right? Like, BlizzCon's already paid for, the venue's already paid for. The only thing I could think of was that two years ago, they had it so that you could pay to see WCS but not go to BlizzCon. And that was a bit of a shit show, remember that? Oh, the virtual stuff? Yeah. No, not the virtual stuff. Like, you you literally could get into the uh, stadium, oh, oh, that but you couldn't the, get into yeah, BlizzCon. That was two years ago. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah two years Brent, ago. Brent ended up coming, like, last day or something for that, so he ended up coming through the side. Yeah, which was, like, good enough, I guess, for people who live there. It was, like, perfect. But it ended up being, I think, more like a logistics problem. Like, they, they kept on trying to get people to stop coming. Because there's, there's an entrance, like, different ways, and you can get to BlizzCon technically if you just kind of walk to the purpose, <laughs> and no one can stop me. You could get to BlizzCon even with a, a much, much cheaper ticket to WCS. Well, last year, that arena filled up so crazy that there was, like, fire hazards, and I almost didn't get to even see the finals because yeah. they wouldn't let more people in. I had to end up telling them I was, like, because I had a media badge. I was like, I got a $1,600 camera in there. If it gets stolen, that's on you. And they finally let me through. <laughs> Wow. I remember that's like, my mom called me in a panic because my bank had said that, you know, like, hey, we just want to know, we're checking up on you. And I was like, oh, God. So I'd like run out and talk to her. Mother's in my right. Anyway. Can't live without them. Literally. Biologically. Moms. That's true. Yeah. Well, I think at this point, it's safe to say we're just waiting for second round matches to start. Everyone's still being, uh, still waiting to be walked over. It feels like maybe only five matches even actually started. So, whatever. I think the walkover timer is probably another five to ten minutes. Um, Hopefully not too long, at least. Yeah, Braddock is probably going to get walked over. I see he still hasn't found this retour guy. Um, <clears throat> the second round matches all look good enough, I suppose. <laughs> Good enough. Of course, Lily Kaneen probably who we're gonna go with. Yeah, highly likely. Um, I will say, small side note, feels good, man. 800 people tune in to watch us not cast anything. It's a good start. <laughs> All right. There's actually a lot of stuff to talk about, I guess, that would probably be better on like YouTube or something. Since we have so much time. To... There's the whole design changes that I kind of forget <laughs> i mentioned this when i was streaming yesterday but i said it's kind of frustrating because we talked about so much stuff at the summit and some of it wasn't posted so i don't know if that means it's still coming or they've completely forgotten about it but it's i think it's really hard to talk about some of the stuff that they've discussed because i want to compare it to other things we discussed that specifically weren't mentioned and that will get us in trouble with the nda so it's like it's a bit of a tough subject to discuss because they we, we unfortunately know more than we should type thing Oh, yeah. I 
I meant like I literally don't know what they talked about, right? So I think I finally confirmed this, so this shouldn't get me in trouble. Um, but they're like, when are the changes happening? People asked me that, you know, because it came down after all the thing already happened, and they're like, oh, are they waiting until BlizzCon? Are they doing it before? And I was like, what did they say was happening? I don't know. I didn't hear it. Do you know anything? Like, I might maybe. know things. <laughs> and then finally, someone confirmed that they said they were doing it after BlizzCon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I missed out. I guess they talked about tank drops and DT and Tempest, and that's that's really it. And I know they, they posted it. I could literally read all the balance changes. But I know that... Isn't the server up now? The patch? Because they said it was like tomorrow, like four days ago or something, right? I don't know. Oh. No clue. Sorry. Well, supposedly that's supposed to be like live, I guess, eventually. And with uh, a ladder was the rumor. That I mean, that's pretty cool. But I don't know. Um, I kind of like am a little excited if that is the case, though, because. Uh, oh, we're getting walkovers now. Yay! Oh, no, maybe that's just Harsons. Damn it. Anyways, like, when Legacy of the Void was in beta, that was a lot of, like, the most fun times of casting when no one knew anything, and it was good content, too, because we could distinguish ourselves outside of, you know, all the Heart of the, heart of the Swarm, the recess events that were happening. And if that could happen again, like, even though it's not a new expansion, it's a drastically different game, that'd be cool, too. But it's always so hard to get people to play, patch, uh test servers yeah that's what i like about the matchmaking thing they're implementing because the biggest thing i know i've talked to you with people is it's just an inconvenience to have to ask people yeah so the fact that you can just get set against it but this also frustrates me because it's kind of like well we've got dead things like archon mode and other other well, well. aspects of the game that could also be solved by the same matchmaking thing so it's like why aren't you guys maybe putting it in over there too because that would be cool yeah i really disappointed with archon i just it, it's still got, in my opinion, potential to be great. They just really haven't put anything into it as a problem. Yeah. Ooh. RTS shooter. 19 months. Ryan. Uh-oh. He's going to get us in trouble with the popo. Yeah, he is. He came in at the exact time. We're talking breaking our NBA like, and shit. Yeah, David Kim's like, I heard I can <clears throat> go check this out. Ryan's like a double agent. He thinks, he thinks that we don't know. We're on to you. This is Rifkin smells? Yeah, I smell through your lies. You Asian of Blizzard. <laughs> they said Asian of Blizzard. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, you're really racist. white Asian of Blizzard. That's how undercover he is. <laughs> you thought he was white? That beard's not even real, dude. <laughs> it's just his dog fur stuck to his glue that he uses to put on his fake face. Rifkin, seriously, anyone? I'm Ryan, I'm sorry, I love you. <laughs> Ryan, for those that don't know, is a really great guy. He was one of the people instrumental to making GameHeart ever happen. And then Forsook, Forsook? Forsaken? He he cast it aside for the WCS so really. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't help you with that, I'm not sure. English is too complicated for me. Yo, I had a problem with Fear Dragon this weekend where... I don't know why I get hung up on this one word, but when people say notoriety about a player, like Naniwa has a lot of notoriety to him because yes. it's like he's done bad things. But if you're talking about someone being good and like, oh, Polt's got a lot of notoriety, it's not the same thing. Polt's got like notability and other things, but he's not known for doing bad things. So that kept coming up over the weekend. And I don't know why I'm hung up on that one word. There's another one that bothers me. Actually, there's a couple words that bother me. Penguin brought this up on Twitter, I've never, I know you and I talked about this once a long time ago, but I've never in my entire life known the phrase bi-weekly to mean twice a week. It's always meant every second week. Anytime I've ever seen it used in context to anything. Yeah, I. there's another thing. Bi-weekly, bi-monthly? I would say bi-monthly trips me up more. But I'm, I'm Either not way, sure. the it, more it I think about me, it, the more I'm confused. It's not like flammable and inflammable where they both mean the same thing. It's one word that means completely different definitions. 
so irritating. Mm. But the other one is, and I think this is my fault. I, I, I actually think I grew up learning this one wrong. To decimate something. Um, I always grew up learning is like killing 10% of something. Because that was actually like a phrase they used back in like Roman days or something. But now it feels oh, like yeah. the, the colloquial of it is just simply just the same as devastate. And people just can interchange yeah, I think that's. I think that's why is that people confuse the two words. Um, Maybe. Because it is. It's like... It's a portion of something, des... But, anyway. Um, what was a... a uh, wait, no, hold on. While I you think, remember. While you think, just a quick reminder to everybody that uh, <clears throat> we, we did miss a couple of the first round matches and we're waiting for a lot of these to get to round two. A lot of walkovers being awarded and some people just being a bit frustrating uh, So, with not showing. So we should have games ideally within the next 10 to 15 minutes, but sorry for the delay. Ow. So yes. The match we're going to be casting is Braddock versus Retor, which... Lily Canine just got an opponent. Do you want to get that one, maybe? Oh. Uh, okay, sure. So it's very I mean, frustrating. I, I, don't, I don't know who Retor is, is the thing. He came back really late. Uh, so. Yeah, so that's what sucks, is that, like... So the brackets came up at, like, I guess, let's say 11.10, which is 23 minutes ago. Um, and Reader wasn't here for 23 minutes, and he shows up in the last minute, and it's like, that should have been a walkover. <laughs> but because people don't want to be really strict to the rules, you know, especially if the guy's like, oh, I was online, but I was in the right channel, or, oh, you had my battle net, I just was AFK, not messaging you, like, they don't want to award the walkover, and they know it should be like, nope, you fucked up. Bye. Yeah, it's I hate it, because, cool, like, but... I think when we started three <clears throat> and a half, whatever, years ago, we were, we were really leaning like this, too. But unfortunately, all I've learned in the last three and a half years is by being lenient and accommodating, people will take advantage of you and walk all over you. So you'll notice like this year, we got really strict, right? Like we started handing out some actual straight up bans for things. We got really strict with players. And it, I, in my opinion, has been a better experience for it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds really cruel, but seriously, like, it holds up not just, you know, us for feeling downtime, which is obviously we're biased and we don't want to do that and have to, you know, feel tired by it. But it literally holds up the brackets. Like, you're also holding up other players eventually. So, it's not just us being douches. I'm just throwing it out there. Poor guy's probably, like, legitimately has some legitimate reason to and I'm being an asshole, but whatever. <laughs> Well, it's been a tweet, guys. First match gonna be Lily Kanin versus Solo. TVZ best of three. Do me a favor, go share those retweets, all that good stuff. I don't think he understands what I'm trying to tell him. It's too different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, we'll get this going here in just a moment time. <laughs> Okay, so Lily Kane versus Solo. Uh, maybe after this we'll catch Braddock. Um, as I assume he's gonna win over Reader, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, thank God, at least in the game. Yeah, in this galactic process, we actually didn't get to see any of this earlier on account of the fact that we were casting the Alima League, and it doesn't have this map in the map pool. So, hype! Yay! The entire time I was trying to Google when or what is happening at Gamescom, I utterly failed. I don't know why StarCraft's there. Why StarCraft players are there, anyways. Well, whatever. The game has started, and it's a best of three. In the bottom left, as the green Terran, he is Lily Kanin. And his opponent, the top right. It's pink, part of that new root slash OSC uh, combination. It's <laughs> the pink Zerg solo. That thing. Yeah. I don't I... know what you want to call it. It's like it's like a merger almost, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, what does OSC really bring to the table for roots? I don't know. <laughs> mm. I was going to talk about this guy's clan tag as well as well. This is happening, of course. But <laughs> I just never bother anymore saying his rights. It's Red Blood, Red Blood Pro. Um, and AI, Lily Kanin, but I'm pretty sure he's not either one, right? Like, this bandit. So, 
Yeah, I believe Red Pro Red Pro's done with. Um, AI used to be Alien Invasion. God knows how long ago. Yeah. So he just like he just. We one day I'll have like five clan tags on his name. Just never bother getting rid of them because you get name changes. But hey, whatever. It is Lily Kaneen, though, and that's the most important thing, and this is why this is happening. So it's it's kind of a cool, a different version of it you can do on Galactic Process. You know, first of all, Reapers are decent on this map. It's not the biggest map. They get there pretty quickly, and there's a lot of uh, ledge room to hop up on and not get surrounded, ideally. But additionally, since there are rocks everywhere, it technically is a good three-base map. Like, it can be a very good macro map. And if you wall off here, then, you know, they got to break down rocks with slow lings. That's not going to happen for quite some time. You know, you can't play mech the way you used to, but there used to be really dumb mech builds where you do a double barracks, in this case, triple barracks open and wall off a ramp really quick, and then just play 3cc turtle behind it. Not mm -hmm. happening here, obviously, but that's what a point. That's an option, like, on the fallback. Like, if Lily Kanin fails at these Reapers, he doesn't have to lose the game because his doors are wide open. He could actually get really greedy behind this if done correctly. Yeah. Unfortunately, because Solo was taking such an odd kind of angled path with this Overlord instead of going like, for instance, right over the barracks, it took him a while to see what was what should have been an even faster three racks scout. So he has a third base on the way that's not going to be very useful. It's just 300 minerals that might have been put into more lings or more queens. Now, I mean, he's getting a spine. He's getting two queens, but he also, he's also still getting drones, which isn't ideal. Because it doesn't look like it's something he needs to do more for, and that's the problem. Identifying this against, I'd say, your average Terran is difficult, but it's the Lincoln Eat. If you see a Reaper in front of your base, you should assume that there's three or four <laughs> more behind it. And you should assume, furthermore, that the barracks aren't even in his main base type thing, right? Like, it's Lily Ganeen. Yeah. The spine call it finishes, but we're just talking about this level of Galactic Process right now. When really, if he ever gets up here, it doesn't matter if it's a spine crawler. I mean, he might just be trying to bait down all the queens here. And sure, Solo should be making queens. They are a good first step. And I think he's building a spine crawler, yeah, in the main right now, but... If you get up to 10, 12, 15 Reapers, it doesn't matter. Yeah, eventually their auto attacks just end up powering through more so than the grenades even. But Spinecrawler unburrows to reposition. This could be a bit of a problem. Reapers can get some free shots on it. No, uh, there's about almost one transfuse ready in these queens, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh, had that gone a little bit worse, maybe the Spinecrawler dies because the Lings did have to protect the same with the queens. So the transfuse does go down. And now he has to look elsewhere. Now, there is a third base. This should have really cut on a solo's defense, but so far he's doing a good job uh, otherwise. Like, he's oh. not going to have speed, though, oh. and he's not going to have roaches. I don't think... I, mm, he'll be able to protect certain areas, but... Yeah, he, I mean, he can't actually protect his hatchery anymore. Uh, the grenades going go up the larva, by the way. Really going to cut out any... Like, at some point, solo's actually going to have too much money. <laughs> Yeah. I think this is the point of no return, in fact. Like, the queens look okay, fine, and dandy, especially with the spine curler down there. But they can't get up the ramp, and I'd... you can't move the spine crawler. Well, like, another part of this, too, is, like, let's not forget, Lincoln Ian is... Okay, first off, he's gotten away with a lot, but he also never stopped making 50... Reapers. Uh, he should have attacked those queens, I think. He spent a lot of time on the spine crawler instead. Uh, I, the spine crawler? Uh, well, the spine crawler moved, and he tried to attack it. I know, but, but I also wish he would get it. Like, if he did, then there's no more lings. <laughs> well, yeah, that. or queens. Yeah, that's it. He should tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Oh, oh no. okay. Rip. Well, the drones actually left unguarded. Queens off creeps. Spine card, the only thing to defend them. But as we can see, like, this is just too much. And he did throw down a command center behind this. So there's even follow up to it. It's no longer just do or die with all these reapers. Although it is pretty much he's doing it. So Solo will die. Yeah. No ling speed. If there's ling speed on, like, what is 20 lings, that could have helped around, but never invested into it. It was a pretty bad build against the 3x opener. I'm honestly surprised it lasted as long as it yeah. did. I mean, the thing about Solo is we've actually cast him a couple of times, and his macro game's not too shabby, but that's the problem. Like, you didn't even get a chance to show that at all. You got to deal with somebody cheesy like Lily Ganine, and you got to be able to stay alive in that first five minutes. Yeah. That's going to send us into Frozen Temple, which I'm making. Will you just be solo? Uh, my mouse hand is really not doing so good today. Oh, that sucks. I, uh, I was looking for games I could play with my controller because the way I, I can't twist my wrist, I can hold a controller just fine. Mm -hmm. And 
I was like, okay, well, there's Stardew Valley, but I played that a bunch, and I'm not really that interested in playing it again. I kind of want to download Fallout 4 again, because I never actually beat it, and that was that's something I could play with the controller pretty easily. But then I saw Total Biscuit make a tweet over the weekend, giving a sort of like once one tweet review of like Dungeon Fighter Online, and I was like, oh shit, I used to play that game so much. Why is he talking about it? Did they come back? And I didn't realize this game has been back for like a year, but it just came out on Steam recently. So I downloaded it and streamed it a little bit. I can only stream for like two hours. I can only play for two hours. That's about all the energy I had for it. But man, that was so fun. And I'm so glad I could play it with the controller. That's good. All the things you just listed, I would not have expected to be played with the controller. That's well, good. Fallout was... I actually think the very first... Not Fallout 1 or 2, but like Fallout 3 or whatever came out for the Xbox or for the PC. I might be wrong on that, so don't kill me, guys. But that's where I played it first. Mm -hmm. uh. And... Uh, I've actually played the other one subsequently on the PC, but with a controller. Oh. As someone who also, in general, can't play or stream for more than two hours or would like to use controllers more because they do use different muscles in different parts of your hands and arms and whatnot, I always try and consider what I can use console um, controllers for and what I can't. But then I just get lazy anyways and don't play anything. <laughs> Oh, I know, I'm great. There you go. You're just yeah, like, ah, yeah. Tumblr, just gonna keep scrolling for a while. Good. Yeah, basically, and I ruined my mouse hand. Yep, that's exactly, that's actually exactly what happens. You just uh, gotta find a way to <laughs> figure the controller to scroll for you. <laughs> I thought it would actually be fantastic. I really should. Oh my god, can you imagine you just have like your finger down on the control? Oh my god, that'd be great. Yeah, because then you have like never ending Reddit as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, in the top left, mostly, it is the green Terran, Lily Kinnean. Of course, he's leading the series, and in, in the bottom right, with a neighbor right nearby, it's going to be the Pink Circle player Solo. And while it's really counterintuitive, and again, I'm, I'm talking in the sense of like a normal Terran opponent, it's counterintuitive to send a drone scout, and it's not something you never really want to do. I would say against the Lickanian, it's always worth doing, because... Okay, maybe two out of ten games, you end up being like, damn, I wish I hadn't wasted the scout. I could have had a little more money. Eight out of ten games, you're like, great, I saw that you didn't pull these up barracks in your main. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think besides drone scouting, which some people do against the Lake Canine, they really want to know exactly zoom, because it's sometimes not even three back three, right? It's like a proxy like factor on one base, something like that. It's something really, really silly versus Zerg. Um, a lot of them just prefer going for like this hard counter, like spawning pool first, for sure. Some people even go for like a roach warn without even seeing anything, because mind you, Solo has not seen anything yet. His overlords are not gonna find where the barracks are. So you'll see people actually put in a roach warn, and then they'll like they'll tap the edge of the base and then be like, "Oh, that looks like a normal build," and they'll cancel the roach warn. If it doesn't look like a normal build, they'll keep the roach warn. But Solo went for a pool first. He has links. He finds it's a three racks reaper. That's still not the end of it, though, and he will just lose these lings for their attempts to... I guess they could have attempted to kill the SCV, but they probably should have. I'd be too late now. You go back to our previous topic, but I wonder if uh, Torchlight has controller support. Dude, that would be... Because those type of games are the ones that wreck my hands the most, for sure. Just spam click. Well, that's also the game we, we both... I think you and I kind of enjoy playing that, right? Like... It was Fear Dragon who didn't, right? Yeah, Fear Dragon realized, like, oh, that's why I stopped playing it. <laughs> I think Olivia doesn't mind either. I should just I should just learn how to play World of Warcraft, though, with a controller. I tried playing with Final Fantasy XIV. That's no. Oh, you know, they, they actually, with Legion, they made it so you only really need, like, six buttons. So <laughs> to totally actually map those out to a controller, no joke. Yeah, um, maybe. We'll see. But anyway, the <clears throat> Reaper attack is like officially starting now like two three reapers is something you can still deal with but when it's five and plus is when you have to get really really fancy the roach warren did finish though once he saw that it was three racks he did put down that roach warren and those should be turning into at least a few ravagers lily Kenny was able to get a bonk up so it's a bit of a healy hut and also like first line of defense if he has to give up the aggression i don't think he should though man center up home, back at home not yet, and he usually doesn't. I mean, this is like not the first time at all that we've seen this exact same style of Reaper with Yo, a soft contain. I'm wondering too, like if you're willing to build a bunker, part of it's like the salvage aspect of it, right? But I almost feel like people like Lily might benefit more from building up barracks. I know it sounds stupid, but just to simply lift it, because high ground is the biggest deterrent to Reapers. Mm. That's quite a lot of units, and these lings do have speed, so oh, they'll be able to help surround a little bit more. 
And now mm. he's going to have the high ground if he wants to hop up here. Bit of a problem. Rojas can still reach, but it is a bit of a stretch. Mm. Grenade's going down, not going to have much. But now the problem is Solo can't get up to the top of his ramp so easily. That's the advantage of these grenades. Yeah, that is the main problem. Ravager can try and deter the Reaper from throwing the grenades just by throwing it's... down one or two corrosive biles, but he ain't get... it's okay there anyways. Works out. Now back to the bottom. <laughs> oh, that the main uses. problem and the problems in the main. Yeah, right. He wants to abuse the it ramp, was... but so far not quite. Well, uh, once again on the high grounds. Cast a curse. I don't know. No, like he's still not quite demolishing the health on the units by getting them on the ramp. He's getting close to it, like it's two or three grenades at a time. But yeah, still, every time every time this grenade's hit by the way, I just want to shut like dance. Like everybody just explodes and goes every direction. Like this is funny, but Ravagers normally make this pretty easy peasy. I actually like that Solo's been cautious with them, but he might be too cautious with them because they haven't been firing any auto attacks. In fact they've been stuck behind the rest of his units. Yeah. I want to note, by the way, this isn't a three racks, this is a four racks. <laughs> four yeah, and away. this this is starting to, this is finally starting to chip away at solo. A lot of the big units going down. More roaches are coming out next, but it's not a problem for the Reapers, which are just continuing to swell in numbers. And I mean, there was a better response out of solo this game, no doubt about it. But my question is, like, would this have been different if he had scouted initially, or would this have still ended up being the exact same game? Probably the exact same game. He. Yeah, tap tap. Okay, GG. Lickening takes the 2 0. Pretty damn quick. And Solo is out. This is the last qualifier for Europe. Yeah, so they have a quote unquote main event. And I'm not quite sure how that's going to function because they do have prizing and money associated with it, but that's going to be on the 26th, I believe. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have groups for it, which will be interesting. So it's like. Uh, first of all, it's best of three groups, but then it's also going to be like four or six groups. There's actually quite a few of them. Interesting. If this all sounds confusing, of course, you can check out the Team Liquid thread. Um, that might help explain it more, just visualizing. <laughs> so uh, just link to the Wikipedia and whatnot. Uh, we're going to be looking for the next match. Which I said we might catch Braddock after this, but that was a pretty fast series. <laughs> so, also might just be waiting for whoever has a game. Looks like the Muslim's out. He might have already won, though, too. He was sitting with Protoss. Yeah, I mean, there's potential for Tarantius and a couple others, but we'll we'll find something. Uh, yeah. I guess ad break, though, in the meanwhile. So, mm -hmm. thank you all for tuning in. More games afoot, and we'll see you soon.